Today, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of condo living in Miami, Florida, and I'm going to get started now. Hey everyone, my name is Jamie Pretzi. I'm a real estate agent in Miami-Dade and Broward Counties. I work with my husband, Ogden Pretzi, and our team. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of condo living in Miami, Florida, and what you need to know from an insider's perspective, someone who works with buyers every single day, and also someone who works with people who buy and then say, this is not for me and need to sell the property. But first, before I get started, if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button so you never miss another update. We do put out new videos every week. Also use the link in our information box and download our free relocation guide. Everyone loves that relocation guide, so make sure you do that now. And when you download the guide, I'll also add you to our newsletter so you can stay on top of all the important information in our market. In the description box, you can also find all of our contact information. So if you'd like to call me, text me, or email me, that's fine too. Okay, let's get started. So if you haven't heard, Miami, Florida is a very popular place to move to. And there are people who are moving into our city and relocating to our city every single day. But if you're thinking about buying a condo in Miami, Florida, you're probably going to want to hear these pros and cons so that you can see if it makes sense for you. So let's start with some pros and then we'll talk about some cons. As we say in real estate, location, location, location. And I think that's one of the best things about buying a condominium in Miami, Florida is that if you are buying a condominium here, you will definitely find a lot of options in the top locations. In Brickell, in downtown Miami, in Miami Beach, in Wynwood, in Midtown, those are sort of the hot areas. And in terms of location, they're some of the best for condominium living. If you're looking for something a little bit more low key, you can really focus on areas like Coconut Grove or Coral Gables. Now they're not not city areas, they're still busy, but they're not sort of the big city areas of downtown Miami or uh, Brickell. So just something to think about if you still want to buy a condominium in a very hot and popular area, but just not right in the middle of the city. Another great thing is if you are considering location and that's very important to you, the buy-in of a condominium is definitely a bit more affordable than let's say, for example, a single family home in the same location. So, and actually in some of these locations, there's really not even a lot of single family homes. So I think that there's definitely something to be said for location and the type of properties that you can get. There's a huge variety in some of the most popular popular areas in our city. Another great pro about condo living in Miami, Florida is a lot of these buildings have incredible amenities and services. Many of these buildings have spas and pools. Some even have tennis courts or some other facility inside, maybe a basketball court. Some of them even have, you know, playrooms for the kids or maybe a yoga place. Every single building has its own kind of amenity service and branded amenity services. And a lot of these luxury high rise buildings around the city, especially the new ones, they're always competing with amenity. So you can get some pretty good services at these buildings. In regards to services, a lot of these buildings, they do have security, they have valet, and they have a management staff on site, maybe a maintenance personnel on site. I was just thinking about this, and this is one thing a lot of times people just don't even think about because it's just expected, but one great thing about owning a condominium here is that let's say you go out of town and your toilet starts leaking and then the neighbor underneath you complains. If you are in a full service high rise building, generally speaking, someone is going to be there to address it immediately so it doesn't turn into a bigger nightmare than it could already be. And that's a great service of living in a full service building is that you typically have someone managing the maintenance. Even if they're not there over the weekend, they're probably on call to take care of any major issues before they turn into nightmare issues. Another great thing about condo living in Miami, Florida is the lower maintenance. And especially here because our 
properties do get a lot of wear and tear from just people coming in and out all the time also the weather you know we sometimes we have really bad storms really strong storms a lot of wind and rain and so when you live in a condominium building there's someone taking care of the maintenance versus a single family home you are going to be responsible for managing whoever's taking care of the maintenance if it's not you so passing that along to someone else in a condo situation is definitely uh, very attractive to a lot of people who don't want to deal with the ongoing maintenance of their buildings now if you buy into one of the smaller buildings where you have a smaller board and it's pretty much self-managed that's a different story but I'm really referring more to the high-rise buildings that have a lot of services affordability and investment potential so if you really compare what you get with a condo and a single-family home I know that they're two different products obviously but generally speaking if you want to buy in and kind of get a little bit of square footage and you know some bedrooms if you try to match the same services and amenities to and the newness of a condominium to a single family home the price point is going to be completely different so you can buy into a condominium with a lot of services a little bit of newness and a little bit more square footage at a more affordable price than a single family home and so affordability is definitely a factor for a lot of people when they want to purchase real estate here and that's why a lot of people do opt to buy condominiums one caveat to that discussion is this is that if you are getting financing on a condominium generally speaking in our area if it's a primary residence you'll need to put down around 20 to 25 percent that's condo financing it's a discussion that we can have at your buyer consultation and also you can have that discussion with your lender overall though the affordability of buying a condominium is a lot more affordable than a single family home and in regards to investment potential it really just depends on what's going on in the market at the time but I would say the good thing is, is if you need to just pick up and leave, you can always find someone to rent out that property and rent it probably for a very long time. And the good news is a lot of real estate agents assist tenants and landlords with rentals here. A lot of those listings do go on our local MLS and we assist both parties through the process. So it's a very standard transaction in our city. It's a lot of us do it because a lot of us work with people who buy and then rent or, you know, maybe they don't want to sell right now they just want to rent and so over the years I mean we've done hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of rentals helping our clients over the years all right so now let's talk about some of the cons one of the biggest cons for condo living that people always complain to me about are the association rules and regulations if you are not a rule follower and rules get on your nerves I'm not so sure that living in a condominium will be for you <laughs> because there are a lot of rules and regulations when it comes to buying into a condominium all the way down to if you want to get the unit painted probably you're going to have to get insurance and licensing for those vendors to come in and paint your unit even if you want to change the floor you'll have to get a permit and make sure that there's the proper soundproofing applied underneath that flooring before you apply it I mean there's just a lot of rules and regulations if you want to use the barbecue you'll probably have to put down a deposit and reserve your time so that's just a negative when it comes to condo living but that's just because you're living amongst a lot of people and they have to make these rules to make sure everyone has a quiet enjoyable life and also when you live in a condominium you'll definitely have association fees that you'll have to pay every month and sometimes people are just not fans of those kinds of fees because they don't have kind of control over what the fees are going towards obviously if you're in a building with a collective number of unit owners everyone will be voting on the fees but if you buy into a building there's already going to be a budget set and that budget is really set for that building for those specific reasons and throughout the year they can add on certain services or change some services maybe the insurance changes and I mean you're not the one typically shopping for the insurance there's someone doing that on your behalf so if you're someone who needs to have a lot of control over those types of decisions condo living may not be for you limited privacy and space so if you're living in a condominium you are definitely going to be sharing walls with people and ceilings with people and floors with people so you have to be very aware of the noise level and you may hear your neighbors sometimes they may hear you if you have a party in your place they may complain about the noise level in your unit 
and you just have to remember that there are people who are living right around you on top of you and underneath you all the time and if this is going to be annoying for you condo living may not be for you but it's just something to know that if you live in a condominium with a lot of people you will definitely have a lack of privacy lack of control over maintenance and renovations this is one thing that i find that people get very annoyed about usually in a building you have a group of people who want to always improve 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 and spend money on repairs and make the building even better than it is today or you have the people who are a little bit more frugal and they don't want anything to be touched so there's always that push pull between every single building and what's happening in that building some things are regulated by the city which nobody really has control over you have to do the certifications that the city requires for safety reasons a lot of times people will want to update the hallways or update the balconies or update the pool landscaping and so if you are someone who doesn't like to spend money on those types of things condo living might not be for you as you can see condo living in Miami Florida has a lot of pros and cons I could probably think of some more but I think this is long enough for today I think if you are thinking about moving here and you want to live in a really hot location I mean actually some of the most popular locations there's really no single-family homes there anyway so Condo living may be your main option and also if you're trying to buy in at a fairly affordable price and get into the market, I would definitely consider buying a condominium. If you have more questions about buying real estate in Miami, we're always here to be a resource for you. My name's Jamie Pretzi. This is my husband, Ogden Pretzi. You can find us online on Instagram at The Pretzies. Don't forget to download our guide and we will see you soon. <music>